then we met Andy Robinson, um, who I believe now is on tour in America. Mm -hmm. um, and because he just came here locally and had drinks quite a lot. Um, and Rosie introduced us to him on the basis that Andy was setting up this practice room in town, um, which was where Butler's gym was. And I think I think that Andy I think Andy struggled to run it really. I think he had too much on his plate. Um, but it, the keys got handed over to John Joe, and this is where we properly met John Joe. And um, we played a gig here as well um, on a Sunday night. It was poetry in numbers and Johnny Kowalski and sexy weirdos, and it was Halloween, 2011, I think it was. Oh, it was a fantastic gig, and we all we all dressed up. J John Joe was dressed like a squirrel, and uh, and uh, I was dressed up like a cowboy zombie, and uh, um, Ben, my guitarist, dressed up like the Hulk. It, it was just, it was just fantastic, a really good night, and then. This, this, so at this point, John Joe had taken over the practice room as well. So we started um, we started practicing there, and it was pretty cheap, and it was pretty pretty chilled out atmosphere, and that went on for quite a while. And then John Joe started doing recordings there as well. So this practice room was quite a quite a big quite a big impact as well. And by this point, that was when the open mic night sort of came along as well. And I felt like it was almost a case of you know there was a community building up here, which was really quite interesting. There was. There was de various different sort of groups of people all sort of coming, coming in here to have a drink and then coming here to have gigs and you know I thought it was important to get something regular and it, Ian and Rosie asked me if I wanted to do the open mic, so it all sort of spiralled from there. The nights themselves I normally plan a month in advance, but I don't. They're not just an open mic night. I put on, I put on a couple of featured artists and I think that that way, that way you've got, you've got a guaranteed platform. Where there's people going to turn up, people going to perform, and um, it means you can vary the night a bit, and you've got various different styles coming in, and you're not always just going to have someone with a guitar, uh, um, you know. So, so I normally book one or two artists. I mean, last month, for example, we had well on Wednesday we had Skewiff and um, the Myths, and they were my two featured artists. And then, so from there, so I, so I basically, you know, start start the month. You know, as soon as the as soon as the last gig's over, or just before the last gig's over, I start asking artists who's coming along, who wants to, you know, who's interested in playing as a featured artist. I get the two featured artists sorted, and then it's a case of just advertising it as an open mic night with those two featured artists. Chris Benyon does the posters for me. Um, I'm running a gig at the Pig and Drum for him at the end of the month, so we've got a bit of a deal going there. Where he does the posters, and I run him a run a gig for him. You know. Um, but um, so yeah, so yeah, that's where that's where it first of all comes from. You've got a you've got a guaranteed platform of music. Um, it's nice because I I get to open the night with a couple of songs myself as the host of the night, and you know it it goes from there. And it's a case of whoever turns up really. You know we've had some quiet ones, we've had some busy ones. The problem is with a lot of open mic nights is they're run very basically. So it's just open mic night, come and play, and that's the way they're advertised. And uh, what happens is that one or two of them might be really busy when you first start, but but if you do them too often and you you don't have anything particularly special going on, then they start to they start to die out a little bit, you know. Um, whereas if you keep them keep them interesting and make them more of an event, I think they're certainly much more um, much more enjoyable for everyone, and it means that it's a busier night all round, better night all round. I've never been able to figure it out. It's it's a really funny one because you can you can advertise it on Facebook all you want and you can have you can have a hundred people decide they're attending and then twenty people turn up. You know. Um and the Facebook event pages don't really mean anything, <laughs> you know. But what well, I mean what is what is nice about Facebook is that it's easily accessible for everyone. So at least that way everyone sees it. Whereas posters don't don't really do anything for anyone, nobody really stops to read a poster, um, even if they're eye-catching, somebody might look at it and that'll be it, it'll be a quick glimpse. Um, I mean, I suppose that's just sort of subliminal messaging, isn't it? You know, it's trying to, trying to push it in someone's head as much as possible that, you know, there's something going on. Sometimes, when, when it's a really quiet night, sometimes the music is, is a lot better. So quiet, yeah, it's so intimate and, you know, everybody was just 
quietly enjoying their drinks and, and the music was really imp an important part of the night and everybody was listening and focused and um, I, I love nights like that sometimes because it you know you, when you perform yourself it makes you feel you know when you're an acoustic artist it's, it's very difficult performing in front of a large crowd because people just talk over you you know and, and you've got to have a certain element of you know it's 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 very difficult to sort of go well you know I can just enjoy this for myself and people might might begin to listen you know sometimes it's quite frustrating when there's a large group of people and they're all just talking and you know you feel like you you feel like you have to sing a little louder and you have to you know perform in a certain way and perform certain songs whereas whereas my songs are always very um very downbeat and very you know a particular style whereas on these intimate nights when I perform it's it's absolutely fantastic because everyone's listening and you know and and it feels like you know my songs are being being paid attention to you know and I think that sometimes those intimate nights are, are better I mean this is another problem with being in a band is that it's it's so expensive to run a band you wouldn't believe it and when you've got I mean for a while I was the only one working so we were a four-piece band and I was the one paying for everything and you know you're paying I mean, even at, even at the practice room we were practicing at, it was, what, five or an hour, which is brilliant. But when you want to do a four-hour session, so you're tight enough for a gig, that's 20 quid. And all of a sudden, I'm forking out 20 quid out of my pocket because no one else has got any money. And there was a lot of there was a lot of that going around for a while. And that, that sort of put it to a stop as well because I was, I was you know, I was fed up paying out that money. You know. It's an interesting point because presumably then if you were going further afield, I was driving to the gigs. Yeah, well, this is another problem we had. Getting the it? drinks when you're at a gig or whatever. Mm -hmm. or? I mean, that was another problem we had. Was the two of us had driving license, but no, neither of us could afford, afford a car, and we had to get the train everywhere. So travelling was always difficult. Like when we played in Birmingham, we had to play acoustic sets um, because we couldn't transport a drum kit, you know, or well, wherever we went, we had to play acoustic sets. Which um, and which which to an extent swayed me towards acoustic music a little more, and I grew to like it a lot more. And it's the same with music. It was always, you know, if we were gonna if we were gonna be in a band, then we were gonna gig, and we were gonna we were gonna practice properly, and we were gonna record properly, and we were gonna record professionally, and we were gonna do it all properly. We weren't gonna just faff because I just I, I've I've never been a fan of of this sort of casually doing things. I, you know, it's just not me. So I either do something and do it properly, or I don't do it at all. So open mics in local pubs, um, does it attract the locals in or or does it actually put the locals off coming and actually you fill the pub, pub up with musicians for the evening? Um, I, I can't really speak for the other pubs locally um, but the Crown's, the Crown's locals are quite, are quite, quite into their music anyway and um, you know there's, there's certain people that, that come along every every time that, that are in here quite a lot as it is and they, they, they quite enjoy it actually I think um, you know there's some of them I'm quite 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 good friends with as well some of them are very nice and um, you know so no I don't I don't think that's ever been an issue especially with open mic because a lot of it's so chilled out you know if you're going to put on a heavy metal night then it's going to cause problems but something like an open mic night I don't think it does really because it's only like you know, I mean, when an acoustic artist is playing, you know, it's only as loud as having the jukebox. I mean, we've got we've got certain artists that have come here before and they've played. You know, by the time they've they've gone on and and they've played for so bloody long that people have left, and then they they finish the set and they moan that they haven't been paid anything. And I hate it when people do that because I've never really been paid for playing my guitar. You know, and I'd never I'd never asked to be. Um. And you know that's that's a do's and don'ts for me. Is it, you know don't expect money from these things. You know it's not. You know I, unless unless you've got a record label or you're you know you're at a level where you play it on a professional level on a day to day basis and you're always attracting an audience and you you know I don't know how you can expect to be paid for these sorts of things. And there are certain artists, especially because we do it on a featured artist sort of basis. There are certain artists that come along and expect a lot of money from it, and we can't. You know we can't afford it. You know, so it's you know. I mean, I, I play every you know I play every month, and I don't you know I don't ask for money for it. You know, I, I run it. You know, 